The Mindfulness Technology suite of biofeedback applications is designed to support mindfulness and meditation practice. This video gives you an overview of how you can use them in this context. Mindfulness is a form of mind training. It's been practiced for thousands of years, especially in Eastern cultures. More recently, it's made an impact in mainstream health services, with a growing body of research demonstrating its value in building well-being. Well-being is not just about feeling good, but encompasses a set of learnable skills and resources that can maintain wellness, such as resilience or the ability to quickly recover from setbacks, also psychological flexibility or the ability to rapidly change your mental and physical state to appropriately respond to changing external circumstances. The ability to change state at will is sometimes known as self-regulation or self-mastery. Mindfulness has been defined as paying attention in a particular way, on purpose, in the present moment, and non-judgmentally. You can be paying attention to some specific object, such as the breath, or just generally, in whatever you happen to be doing. Mindfulness is itself a skill that can be developed and strengthened with practice. We can deepen our understanding of mindfulness by considering the core component skills and abilities that make up mindfulness. This will help us to see how biofeedback can support mindfulness practice. Firstly, the ability to hold the mind steady in its focus on the object of concentration and not to wander off into distraction. Secondly, acceptance, or staying open to experience just as it is, without either resisting and struggling against unpleasant experiences or craving and grasping after pleasurable experiences. Thirdly, the ability to stand back and maintain a kind of mental space around experience without getting sucked in or caught up in mental contents in a narrow and short-sighted way. Fourthly, the ability to freely access positive emotions such as warmth and kindness or curiosity or inspiration. Fifthly, the ability to notice when the mind has wandered away. For many people this is what meditation practice is all about noticing the mind has wandered and bringing it back gently to the object of concentration again and again. The aim in mindfulness practice is simply to be aware and to maintain awareness of present moment experience, nothing more. It's not to access some particular mental or physical state such as stopping thinking or slow abdominal breathing. On the other hand, the implicit aim is to create the best possible conditions for maintaining awareness. Mental qualities that support awareness include contentment, stillness, openness, clarity, spaciousness, steadiness, freedom and kindness. Qualities that will hinder mindfulness include agitation, restlessness, craving, negative emotions such as anger, dullness, narrowness and constriction. How do we go about cultivating these qualities, especially given that they're not the overt goals of mindfulness practice? And how does biofeedback come into it? Part of the answer starts with the concept of the mind-body connection. This is the idea that how we're feeling and thinking subjectively is reflected in the body's physiological state. For example, feeling anxious is likely to be accompanied by tightness in the muscles and perhaps shallow and rapid breathing coming from the chest. Conversely, feeling calm and still goes with loose muscles and slower belly-based breathing. The mind-body connection suggests a strategy for change to create the physiological conditions for positive qualities. To be mindful, we need to embody mindfulness. We need to practice mindfulness with the body. Biofeedback is a tool for learning self-mastery based on the mind-body connection. A biofeedback device measures some aspect of our physiological functioning that correlates somehow with subjective experience and feeds back the information via computer. 
Seeing changes happening in real time gives you a basis for developing greater awareness of your own responses as mind-body phenomena, and then learning the skill of influencing your own physiology. So what specifically can we measure? To be useful in biofeedback, any parameter must meet three criteria. Firstly, it must be easy and practicable to measure so that you can be confident of an accurate and meaningful reading. Secondly, it must show a clear relationship to subjective experience. It must be clearly perceivable so that what you see on the computer screen makes sense. And thirdly, it must be relatively easy to influence so you can develop a sense of personal efficacy. The mindfulness technology applications are based on four main parameters all of which meet these criteria. Muscle tension is useful because it's directly consciously controllable on the one hand and on the other also subject to indirect influences such as emotions. Muscle tension biofeedback helps to develop the skill of acceptance. The opposite of acceptance is resistance or even avoidance. When we don't want to feel some part of our experience like a pain then we can literally brace ourselves against it as though we could hold it off. So inner psychological resistance is reflected outwardly in muscle tension. Heart rate coherence is a pattern of synchronization between breathing and heart rate, such that the heart speeds up when we breathe in and slows down when we breathe out. It's less directly controllable than muscle tension, but it's something the body can do quite naturally when it's in the right conditions. Positive emotions, such as joy and hope, can enhance it, while negative emotions like anxiety and frustration will block it. So it's a useful means of working with emotions. Another useful parameter is the measurement of infrared heat radiation coming from the forehead. This infrared heat comes from metabolic activity in the brain, so what we have is a means of gauging changes in activity in the brain's executive control area, the prefrontal cortex. This area is heavily involved in paying attention, emotional regulation and several other important functions. Infrared temperature biofeedback is thus a means of developing these functions by training the brain directly at a physiological level. Breathing is one of the most commonly used objects of concentration in mindfulness practice, so it makes sense to monitor it in support of mindfulness of breathing. Let's return to the core skills of mindfulness. One I listed earlier was the ability to notice when the mind has become distracted. This isn't easy as you'll probably know if you've ever tried meditation. It's common to drift off into daydreaming or worrying for several minutes at a time. In a general sense, distraction is a change of state, and so according to the mind-body principle would be reflected in a change of physiology. If our biofeedback device can detect these changes independently, then it can serve as a distraction detector. Each of the biofeedback parameters has its own strengths and weaknesses as a distraction detector, depending on the nature of the specific distraction. It'll help to think about how we can characterize different forms of distraction. Some distractions are high arousal, such as restlessness, agitation or craving. There's plenty of energy, but it's unfocused or undirected. By contrast, other distractions are low arousal or low energy, such as sleepiness, boredom or daydreaming. Other distractions involve the arising of negative emotions, such as ill will or frustration or anxiety. Sometimes the problem is an overly willful mental application or a lack of flow. And sometimes the problem is a combination of these. EMG is good for detecting high arousal distractions as they manifest as muscle activation, but not good for detecting sleepiness as it can't distinguish relaxed awareness from relaxed unawareness. Heart rate coherence is good for picking up disturbing negative emotions and also willfulness as it represents a kind of flow state that you need to let go into 
rather than something that you can forcefully bring about. In my experience, both low arousal and high arousal distractions lead to the breath becoming much less regular and usually faster. Infrared temperature is useful for detecting the beginnings of low energy drifting as awareness begins to fog out. In the last section, I want to list some general guidelines for using the applications in mindfulness practice. The first is, find ways to let the feedback support your mindfulness rather than supplant your purpose. The purpose of meditation is not to gain high biofeedback scores, it's to transform the mind or whatever other purpose that you bring to it. Especially in the early days, it's easy for the software to monopolize your attention so that it seems more like a distraction than a help. But with experience, you'll find you can let the feedback be in the background. You'll be able to configure the controls to suit your needs at the beginning of your session, then forget about them. Audio feedback is very useful in the context of this guideline, so I suggest you become familiar with the options available. For example, I personally find breathing tone feedback to be very helpful. You can set audio feedback to be more or less intrusive. I suggest turning the volume quite low. Try out threshold-based feedback. This only comes in when you've drifted out of your desired mind-body state, so you can use it as a distraction detector. Secondly, work from where you are, not where you want to be or think you should be. This means don't be overly goal-oriented. Think of your purpose as to move in a direction rather than to reach a destination. What do you need to do to take the next step in that direction? Frustration, despondency and self-criticism will hold you back and even lead you in the opposite direction. Thirdly, don't rely on willpower or the force of your intent as the only means of creating change. You're looking for your practice to become something of a flow state. Flow states, although they have a sense of control, feel effortless and involve a loss of self-consciousness. Accessing flow means entrusting. Trusting that your body, or perhaps another level of your mind, already knows how to change, and you just need to allow the process to unfold. You can also trust in the power of awareness itself to create change, if you can keep your attention broad and open. Imagination is another faculty that you can trust in. The mind, and even the body, responds to imagination as to an invitation, and it can have a very different effect from giving yourself orders. The other videos go into more detail for the individual parameters and applications, but even so, a lot more could be said on how best to make use of the software. As time goes on, I hope to make more teaching material available online.